You are listening to the preaching podcast by the Mission View Baptist Church of Kansas City, Missouri, led by Pastor Vaught Mal. It is our desire to bring you biblical, sound doctrine messages that inspire and uplift your walk with Jesus to serve Him faithfully every day. Last uh, Thursday, we, uh, for the men, I talked about don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. You know, I can tell you my story. I almost quit. I almost quit. I was this close for the Roy Ryan. I was so close. You know, uh, the thing about quitters, quitters always quit. They always quit. You know, you're going to see that life never, ever, sometimes, we're put in a bondage of slavery. I'm going to be honest with you. You look at life today, we're a slave. The Bible says this, if you owe anybody money, <laughs> you are a slave to that person. I want you to know something. You look at the story in Exodus chapter 2, I want you to understand something that the people of God, they didn't owe anybody money. The United States of America, as of right now, we're over $40 trillion. $40 trillion over. Owing someone money. We're slaves to our debt. The Israelites weren't slaves to anyone because they owed someone money. It just so happened that God, at one point, He told uh, Abraham that I will build you a what? A nation. A house. The greatest nation in all of the world. That I will give you a house that's full, abundance. Imagine knowing the story, and you hear the stories of how God was saying to Abraham, I'm going to give it to you. And the people heard it, they read about it, they've been taught about it. And now they're in slavery. Ever happened to you before? When you go to church, you read your Bible, maybe you were promised something, and it just didn't happen. I wonder how our attitude is. You see, many here, we just got done with two people, the midwives, Pua and Shifra. We just got done with that. Now we're in Exodus chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 1 to 10. We're going to be in that chapter. We're going to go to some other verses as well. But I want you to know something, that here are people who are stuck in slavery. Who are you a slave to? Who are you a slave to? The king here says, told the midwives to go and kill all of the firstborn, or, or sorry, all the male child, go kill them all. If they are born, and you take them out, and you kill them right there, you murder them right there. And two of the midwife said what? Said what? No. 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 You know, I look at the scriptures, and we look at what God did with the obedience of Abraham as Isaac went up the mountain. That God would spare his son. Here, not from obedience, it's from defiance. That God, God also would spare another son. Remember the story of the two ladies again? How because of God's wisdom that he gave to Solomon, that it saved the baby. The obedience because of Pua and Shifra that it saved the baby. That now we're going to see another one. How because of a defiance against a king. Order that it will save a baby. I want you to look at it, alright? You guys ready for this? Look what it says here in Exodus chapter 2 verse 1. It says, and there went a man. I want to let you guys know before we go on. I only have three pages here. Of notes. Amen? <laughs> and so I, I don't have my eight page normal, right? You know? And there, and there went a man of the house of Levi and took to him a, a daughter of Levi. 
So it's not like this, uh, this uh, 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 here, we're looking at here, it's not like it's a mixed multitude here, okay? It's two Israelites married one another, they did the right thing here, making right decisions, and the woman conceived and bare a son. Understand this, that it's the most blessed thing to have is when you get to bear a child. If you're in here today and you've had an opportunity to have children, then thank God for that blessing. Even if you got one, amen. It's a blessing here that she bare a son. And when she saw him that he was good, a goodly child, she hid him three months. I want you to turn with me so we understand a little bit more in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. Hebrews 11, verse 23. Look at what happened here. The Bible says that when she saw him. You know, uh, how many of you know that every, and, and this is to understand, if you're having children soon, and I get to hold the child, right? I'm happy, amen? Uh, if you let me hold your child, right? I'll be scared to death because I don't want to drop him or her, right? You know what I mean? Okay? But know this, that every child that comes out, don't get mad, ladies, they're ugly. <laughs> right, okay? You're, Jesse's like, oh! Right, okay? <laughs> and people are going to hold the baby and say, oh, this is a cute baby, and they take a picture. Look at my baby. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, you thought about it. I just said it, all right, okay? She, it says here, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, be careful. A lot of uh, different maybe versions or even different uh, uh, common, co commentaries, they say this, that the goodly child means that he was handsome. Let me tell you something. No, he wasn't. <laughs> I'm reading it, I'm like, handsome? Like, all right, if that's what you want to go with, well, let's look what the Bible says. Look what it says in Hebrew 11. It says, by faith, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a what? Proper child. Proper. I want you to know that it does come together goodly. It's not handsome. The word proper here is the word goodly, because the word goodly and proper is one word, Amen. peculiar. Peculiar. What's the word peculiar? Distinctive. You understand, this is a Hebrew child. It wasn't like he was mixed. My kids, if you look at my daughter, we sang today, all right, that was my daughter, if you didn't know that. Because I know she's white, man. <laughs> She's very white. How many of you know that, all right? She's very light complexion, right? She looks like her mother. Praise the Lord for that. But she, my daughter, she's half Cambodian and half uh, Caucasian, right? That's a race. I don't know, right? You know what I mean? White, you know? Right? You know? Has a lot of Irish, you know what I mean, in her blood, right? You know? My kids, my other three kids as well, mixed. Most of today, we're all mixed. Many of us, we're all some type of mix something, I don't know. I never ask a question about what race somebody is. They'll go on and on about, okay, my mother was this, and my father was this, and I'm German, and I'm Irish, and I'm, okay, all right, what are you? I'm not, no, I'm joking, right, amen? <laughs> and so, no pure blood, but this was a pure blood. Pure as it can be. Champion blood, amen? This is pure. He was peculiar. I want you to know the root word for the Latin root word of peculiar is piku. Piku, not Pikachu, all right? Okay? Piku. Piku means cattle. Cattle. If you know anything about cattle, especially in those days and even today, it's, just, it's cattle are private property. They're a private property. You don't just go and just start taking someone's cattle to somebody's farm. Cattles are pressed. You go to Texas, they have these big giant iron. And they psh, put that right on the side, burn them, put that emblem on them. The private property. Understand something here. He was peculiar, he was distinctive. 
He was different. He was private property. When you're a slave to any nation, you don't have private property. You don't own anything. It belongs to Pharaoh and the government. What do you mean what's going to happen here of who this child is? This child didn't, honest, didn't really belong to her. Because every child belongs to Pharaoh, the king. You know, today, uh, we look at life today, let me ask you something. Do you own anything? Or are you slaves to someone? Here, he was a goodly child. He was a proper child. He was peculiar. We'll see more of that word peculiar coming up here in a bit. But it said that she hid him for three months. Imagine hiding something so precious for three months, especially a child. She said to herself, understand this, she had two children before him. She had Aaron and she had Miriam. So here this child, and we're gonna know who the child is in a bit. Here this child is private property to her, but what about the other two? Why is this child so important? Why is she gonna be able to hold them and put them away and not hear him cry one time in three months? Yeah, I remember having children. I had four, Lydia, see the street, Okay, here we go. She's one of them. Amen. <laughs> Remember holding them the first time. You know the first time when I held them? Guess what I hear? <laughs> this child here at this time, children were being held to be thrown into the river here. You're going to see here that the king himself, he said, he said, Go and kill every child that's born, every male child that's born, and keep the ones that aren't male, which is, I'm going to use this, ready, you ready? Keep the female. In the world we live in today, you can't say that. To keep the female. Distinctive, different, he was a male child, don't change that. Don't ever change it. He was a male child, and this child was hit for... Three months, no cry. Why? He was peculiar. Why? He was different. Why? He was personal property. Look at this, and when she could not no longer hide him, she took him on an ark of bulrushes. You don't know what bulrushes are? You know what I mean? It's one of those things that look like hot dogs right at the end. Cause, uh, of grass, you know what I mean, <laughs> right? This is this plant, you ever seen that before, right? Okay, don't ever try eating them, right? Okay, they're not, uh, they're not good for you, man. They're not hot dogs. <laughs> and she took them and made an ark. Notice this ark that she's made here out of bulrushes. And then she dubbed it with slime and with pitch. What she did was she put tar over it, covered it so that uh, there's no water will go through this, what we call a basket, an ark here and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the riverbanks. I want you to know something, what happened here is she's building an ark for her child, her private property. And his sister, who's his sister? We'll know later on, it doesn't say her name here, but later on in the chapters, it'll tell you what her, her sister's name is. His name is Miriam. And Miriam, uh, she's probably six to ten years old at this time, and uh, his sister stood afar off to wit what would have been done to him. What she was doing was like what Mordecai, what happened in uh, Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2, we see that Mordecai would go and check up on Esther all the time and making sure that she was okay. And here we see that her, his sister Miriam would go check up on him. She puts them in a river. Well, I want you to know, as her sister goes check on that river, this river is the Nile River. 
the Nile River. The Nile River is known to be the largest river in all of the world. All of planet Earth, it is the largest river that you would go to, the Nile River. I want you to understand something as you see here. And the next one it says, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down and washed herself at the Nile River. At the Nile River. I want you to know how big it is. Right? Okay? This Nile River goes all the way from uh, uh, nearly half of Africa all the way up past Egypt into the Mediterranean Sea. About three million gallons will go into that sea per day. That's how much it will go through. That's a big river, huh? The Nile River, the largest river in all of the world. And here it is, she takes the baby, puts him in this ark, this basket, and sends him down the river. It's also known, the Nile River, this river is also known as the Crocodile City. Crocodiles everywhere. Putting, putting this private property, putting this peculiar person into the river, down the Nile River. And I don't know, how many miles <laughs> this baby had gone to. You know, this miles and miles of river, I like to say that the baby went miles and miles and miles down the river, amen? And if you don't believe that it went miles down the river, then you're in denial, amen? <laughs> Caught that, amen? As the baby goes down this river for miles, <laughs> for miles, Pharaoh here, daughter, I'm sorry, Pharaoh's daughter here, goes and washes herself in this river and sees the baby. Before we go on, and as we see the picture, I'm trying to pick the picture in your head here, is here is a baby down the Nile River and is seen by one of the most worldliest persons ever. And this worldly person comes down while she's washing. This is what happened. Look at it. And her maidens, verse number five, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child and behold, you ready? The baby wept. For the very first time ever, the baby looked up and saw the most worldliest person ever and wept. John eleven thirty five, 35, the easiest verse you would ever remember in your mind or uh, memorize. John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. He wept because he saw a whole bunch of worldly sinners wept. The baby wept for the first time when, when he saw Pharaoh's daughter for the first time. He wept. Let me tell you something. The world comes to Christians. And the world wants to see us be these type of people. I want you to look what happened in verse number in, in Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. The world Egypt is a picture of the world looks at us and look what it says here. Verse 14. Who gave himself for us? Who's who? Jesus Christ would give himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. He might forgive us. He might take away all of our sins, all of our iniquities, and purify unto himself a what? Peculiar people. Zealous of good works. I wonder when the world, because of the fact that Jesus Christ died for us, he forgave our sins, that the world will look at us and say this. That's a goodly child of God. That's a proper child of God. That is a peculiar 
child of God. Look at this in 1 Peter chapter 2. I wonder when people look at us and it says there, it says, and purify unto himself. How do you purify something? Here, we know it's the water. That, 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 that she, uh, the mother of the mother of, uh, of, of Moses, and I skipped a lot because of time, but the mother of Moses would, would drop him into the water and have so much courage and put him inside where? A water. That it would send him down the water. Then, Pharaoh, the world, Pharaoh's daughter, the world will see the child. The child wakes up, looks at her, and looks at the world and says, Hey. <laughs> Zealous of good works, peculiar people. Look right here, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says here, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Before we go on to the next word, understand this. You are private property. You belong to God. Every single one of you, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you belong to Jesus. You are private property to Him. Look at here, it says here, it says that ye are a holy nation, chosen generation, royal priesthood. You are a child of the King. You are what? A peculiar people. Which means the world, when the world looks at us, the world says, you're different. You see, when, when Pharaoh's daughter, when, when she saw him, when he cried, she said, here, you're different. Who are you? Watch, you're going to see what happens here. But I want you to know, it says here, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of what? Darkness. Into the marvelous light. That he has called us out from all the worldly stuff into what? Good. The godly stuff. Watch how peculiar. Watch what Pharaoh's daughter did. Let's go back to our text verse in Exodus chapter 2. Look what happened here. She opened it up, verse number 6. She saw the child and behold the, 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 the babe wept. And what happened? You see, even the people of the world, look what happened. Even the people of the world had this. Ready? And she had what? Compassion on him. A worldly person. The picture of Egypt is the world. A worldly person. Her father is the one that put an order out there and said, this is law now. Any male child that's born must be murdered and killed. And she had compassion on a peculiar child. I want you to think about that. How powerful it is. This is why it's so important when we look at the great Samaritan. We don't know much about him. We don't know if he got saved through the ministries of Jesus when he was healing people, when he was going through Samaria. We don't know anything about that. But it could just be that the story of the great Samaritan is someone who's of the world. That you understand that the priest saw this broken down uh, person. He was robbed and he was robbed by thieves and beaten down and stripped away with everything. No clothes. And the religious person. We're talking about the priest walked over to the other side and left him alone. And then we see the Levite, the guy who thinks he's better than everybody else and wants to be a priest someday. He wanted to be a somebody. He then looks at him, feels sorry for him, and walks over to the other side. Then the Samaritan came and had compassion on him and took care of him. See, we don't know much about the Samaritan, but it could be like just like this, that Pharaoh's daughter... A picture of someone from the world had compassion on a what? A child of God. I wonder if we're like that. I wonder if we're like the priests. I wonder if we're like the Levi. Because it's shame. It's a shame that there are people outside of these doors that aren't Christians that have compassion for the homeless. That have compassion for the broken. They have programs out there. They have systems out there. They have uh, uh, homeless shelters. They have, they have uh, 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 food banks. They have all these things. They're not even saved. They have compassion for people. May it, that doesn't happen in here. May the people in here have compassion for people. 
more better than the world. Amen. We look here and she had compassion on him. And she said this. She said, this is one of the Hebrews. Children. She knew. She knew this child should have been dead. She understood it and she had compassion. I want you to know what you see the next one. You're going to see what happens here. It says here, and Pharaoh's daughter said to her. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just go back. Then, then said his sister, who's his sister? Miriam, to Pharaoh's daughter. Wait a minute here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's pick a picture here. Mom, Moses' mom, Jochebed, puts them in an ark, throws them down the river, crocodiles everywhere, serpents and snakes everywhere, goes down this large river for Niles and Niles, right, okay? Goes down, here comes this little girl, about six to 10 years old, running down, making sure her brother was okay, gets there and walks up to Pharaoh's daughter, one of the most powerful lady in the world. She went through the world, a child. Listen, children, right here. If you're a child here, listen, if you are a child here, God can use you. God can use every one of you. Because right here, because of her act of going to Pharaoh's daughter, she now speaks. The sister, his older sister, speaks to her. I want you to see how it's all part of the plan. You see, when a mother, if you know this, when a mother has to let go of a child, we talked about this in our class today. Some of us, and we have a brand of her sons, three years old, amen? Josiah, someday he's going to go to preschool or kindergarten. And you have to dress him up. You have your little uh, chalkboard right out there, you know what I mean? Right? First day of school. And you let him go. And you see him walk away. It's heartbreaking. It's exciting at the same time, but it's heartbreaking for a mother. You remember those days, right? When your child, when you let him go, and her go and say, hey, go to school, and you don't have her around for three to four hours. And you tell yourself, what do I do with this hour, <laughs> right? Imagine the mom saying, you know what? What if I just talk to my friends about this? What if I go to my friends and, hey, so could you tell me about how the, 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 the Egyptian soldiers, how they knocked on your door? And, could you tell me about that? And, and how you just let it, like, you know, let them take the baby and kill the baby? Well, I wonder if she did that. I wonder if she went to a pastor and said, Pastor, so I'm thinking about doing this crazy thing here. Everybody's coming. Everybody is trying to kill our baby. And uh, can you tell me what to do? Because I'm about to put this baby down the river. You know, she here, we know that there was a plan. There was a plan that was involved. The plan was to get Marion down there making sure the basket will get there. You see, the unseen hand of God was below that ark the whole time. The same way the ark with Noah, how God would guide it right to the mountaintop and lay it right there. It's the same hand that moves this ark to Pharaoh's daughter. Amen. But somebody waited at the end to talk on behalf of the child. The plan here is about to work. Because it says in verse number 7, it says, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman? Imagine that. Mother, which is Jochebed, says, Miriam, you need to go over there, and when God leaves that basket, that ark, down the stream, safely, you need to talk 
to Pharaoh's daughter and said, I know a nurse. <laughs> I won't tell you her name, but I know a nurse that can feed that baby. The picture here says here, watch, that she may nurse the child for thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go! Wow, you know a nurse? Really? How do you know a nurse? I'm not gonna tell you, I just know a nurse. I'm gonna go get her, then go get her. She goes and the maid went and, co and called the mother's child. Know this, they don't know it. Look what happened here. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take, his take this child away and nurse it for me. I want you to understand something. That private property that she had, when she gave it to God, God took care of it. Someone adopted the baby and said, it's mine. But I want you to know something in that picture when she said, go and nurse this baby for me. Feed this baby for me. She said, I'll even pay you. Look at this. I'll even give you the wages. You see what happens? You know, many times we hold tight to something. See, God will use anybody. God will use Pharaoh's daughter if he wanted to. You see in scriptures, God will use many people in scriptures. God will use uh, Rahab the harlot. A harlot to help save a nation. God will use, understand why this. God will use teenagers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to save nations. God will never use whatever he pleases. But we must first understand that every private property that we think is ours, we must give it away. Because God's about to take care of this baby and raise it up. And guess what? You're going to be taken care of when you give it away. Watch how she gave it away. Understand this. She didn't work like this. She was someone who worked with their hands. Mary, uh, uh, Jochebed was somebody who maybe went out there and worked with her hands, plowing the fields, and now guess what? Her life is good. She gets to sit down and not only nurse her baby, but she gets paid doing it. Amen. What a great trade, isn't it? Amen. I want you to look at that. Just, I'm just painting a picture until we get to the message here. And the woman took the child and nursed it. So the mom nursed it. And the child grew... That time the child grew, you're looking at about three years old now. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. Back to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she called his name what? Moses. Now we know the story of Moses. What a great story, isn't it, really? But don't forget the most amazing part about this. We're gonna, this is the message right here. I'm excited about getting to this. And she said, Pharaoh's daughter said this, because I drew him out of the water. The name Moses, she drew him out of the water. I pray and hope today, as you hear this final part of the message, that the name Moses means something different. This private property, this peculiar person, means something different in your life today. It first starts out with that ark. How God would draw because of faith take out Noah out of the water. And God here would draw Moses here out of the water. And God would draw O oh ye of little faith Peter out of the water. Oh, ye of little faith. This message is not to give you to have bigger faith. All you need is a faith as a mustard seed. Faith as a mustard seed. And he will draw us out of the water and purify us. I want you to know as we go to Romans chapter 8, verse 28, you see. We know the verse very well, but we got to understand it. 
Three weeks ago, or four weeks ago, on Christmas Eve, we started out a message to go all in for God. To love the Lord thy God with what? All thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. To love God. Look at this. We have to be very careful. People use this verse out of content many times. Look what it says, verse 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for what? Good. To them that what? Love God. Do you understand this? The only reason why this baby made it down the stream through the Nile River among all of these trials and tribulations down that river is because the mother loved God. Amen. Because, I guess say it again. Because the mother and the father, Amram, loved God. Amen. Because they loved God. If they did not love God, that child would not make it down the river. You see, you know the next verse in 29, it says that it is predestined. Know this, that we are not predestined in this area of salvation, okay? Right? If not, the God did not choose an elite to say, you get to go to heaven and others don't. No, no, no. You must make a decision Amen. on your own. You see, you understand that here, a parent, two parents here, we're talking about uh, uh, the father, Abraham, and we're talking about the mother, Jochebed, had to make a decision to love God. They had to make a decision. That baby would never have made it down the river if it was predestined to go down that river. No, 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 don't believe it. It's the same way that some of us believe that God would birth Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus so that he can go to hell and that we all can go to heaven. Oh, be careful with that type of doctrine. No, 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 no. God did not birth Judas Iscariot so that he can just betray Jesus and go to hell. No, Jesus Christ died for him as well. Same way he died for you. But you see, you want all things work together for good. But you're not private property. You don't belong to a Savior. You don't belong to Jesus. If you have accepted Christ, you've accepted the love of God. Oh, you are private property. You are joint heirs with Jesus. You are on your way to this perfect paradise in heaven. In here today, let me ask you this question. Are you private property yet? Or do you belong to somebody else? You either belong to the world, Satan himself, or you belong to God. And if you want all things to work together for good in your life, you must love God. How? With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because the next part is this. Look what he says. The Bible, look what the Bible says. Look what Paul says. To them who are the called according to his what? Purpose. You see, there was two parts. There was a purpose, a calling, a purpose for Moses. But it took two ladies to not, to make a decision to not kill children, midwives. And it took a mom and dad to love God. It took these two ladies, uh, Shipra and Pua, to, to, to defy the king's uh, orders and to what? To have the fear of God. Yes, we all, we, every one of you, the moment you accepted Christ, you have been given a purpose. There's a plan. The plan, just like Miriam, will go down the, the river and will talk to the mother, uh, 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 what do you call that, uh, Pharaoh's daughter. There's a plan. But you must love God. And you must understand you have a purpose. I want to finish this until you understand and I know the, the game's coming on, coming up pretty soon, right? Amen? <laughs> Joshua 1 9. Joshua 1 9. In the scripture, it tells us that this word you're going to see has appeared eight times in the scripture. It's used by Jesus Christ as well. I want you to look. It says here. Verse number 9, Joshua 1, 9. Have not I commanded thee, have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, 
For the Lord thy God is with thee. Whether you go down that now river. Whether it throws thy boats. The Lord God is with you. If you're not saved today, the Lord God is not with you. If you are saved today, the Lord God is with you. But the word says this, be of what? Good cheer. A peculiar person is a person of good cheer. They don't walk around like Eeyore. Amen? You guys know what I'm talking about? We need a poop. All alone. Oh me. The clouds on me in my head. Right? You know what I mean? That you must be strong. You must be of good courage. Don't be afraid. God is with you. It's, it's, it's said there many times. The word cheer means be happy. There's a song called Don't Worry, Be Happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Amen? Yeah. Be of good cheer. You see here Jesus Christ in John chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus Christ, is, they're getting ready to go into the Garden of Gethsemane. They're getting ready to, he's getting ready to go on the cross. Before he goes on the cross, he's getting ready to be tried and beaten and scourged. And listen to what he says to his apostles. Look what it says in verse number 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye might have peace in the world. Ready? In the world. Ye shall have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You see, I want you to understand something. That here it is, Moses is going right into the palace. The most worldly of palace you'll ever be, be in. Amen? And you're going to see as we go down the book of Exodus, he overcame the world. You see, you can overcome you see, the world wants to look at you and say this, you're peculiar. And if you're not different, if you're not happy, Christians, if you're not happy, you don't have joy, you don't have good cheer, because hard time comes, tribulations come, you're going down that Nile River, there's crocodiles everywhere. If you are not happy, guess what? The world looks at you and says, you're just like us. You're not a proper child. You're not a goodly child. You're not a peculiar child of God. You see, when he overcame the world, he told us this, you have hope. You have hope. I want to leave you with this uh, uh, a moment here. Remember the time when God pulled you out of that water? How many of you remember that? He purified you. He cleansed you of all your sins. All because you had faith like Noah. All because you had faith like Moses and his family, all because you had faith, like Peter, that he purified you. Today, we're going to have a bunch of people getting baptized. Amen? Amen. Know this, that water there doesn't purify you. The living water, Amen. Jesus Christ, purifies you. He purifies you from all of your unrighteousness. If you accept Christ as your seven, he purifies you. You're saved and you're redeemed by his grace, by his blood. Be of good cheer. You have hope. But I want you to know, you're about to see something amazing next week. Moses, soon here, will go back to water. And God's going to do something amazing. You know what I'm talking about, right? Amen? He's going to go back to water. And I want to encourage you something. Jesus Christ gives us strength. He gives us courage if we have faith. Have faith in God today. Go all in this year with faith in God. Be of good cheer. Have courage. Love God. Know that all things work together for good. Amen? Let's pray. Amen, Father. Thank you for tuning in to the preaching podcast by Mission View Baptist Church. We sincerely hope that this message has touched your heart and stirred your passion for the gospel. For more information about our ministry or to connect with us, please visit our website at missionview.church. If you found encouragement in this biblical message, we encourage you to share it with a friend, reach out to us, or join us for our next episode 
on the Mission View Baptist Church Preaching Podcast.